welcome back. Today we're going to talk about thermal energy transfer. Two questions I'd like you to keep in mind while we're listening today is what is the direction of heat energy flow and how are atoms involved in the energy transfer itself? What exactly is this heat energy transfer? Well, if you take your hand, you know, this is kind of a good looking hand here. If you take your hand and you put it on a flat surface like onto a table, okay? Now the table often is going to feel cold because your hand is hot and your hand is losing energy into the table. So that heat goes into the cold surface. So energy transfer always flows from high energy to low energy. Or an easier way to think about it, when your parents always told you don't touch a hot surface, it's because the energy flows from a hot surface to a colder thing. So if you touch something hot like the stove, your hand could get burned because the energy is going into your hand. You can find these in any kind of situation, but I'm going to focus today on the idea that maybe we're in a kitchen, okay? If you're in a kitchen, I want you to imagine you are uh, standing in the kitchen and you're wondering, okay, what exactly is energy exchange? So let me draw my basics here. Uh, let's say you've got the countertop and the cabinets and everything like that. So you're just facing your kitchen. Here you've got our stove and on the counter you have a toaster and these two things alone can indicate to us exactly where our energy exchange is happening, okay? Uh, let's see, our toaster is plugged in there. So the first thing I like to think about, the first thing I like to often do, is cook a lot of pancakes. So let's say here you put a frying pan onto your stovetop. Now, the stovetop here is a hot surface, so it's going to transfer heat into this pan. The atoms at the bottom of that pan are going to heat up. They're going to gain a lot of energy. If you put something in that pan, like I like to make uh, pancakes. So let's say you put a pancake into this pan. Here we've got our pancake. And when the pancake touches those hot particles, the heat is transferred from the pet from the atoms into the pancake. So the pan is heating up the pancake. So conduction is this first idea that we have energy transfer between objects in direct contact. Now this is really important, the direct contact idea. Let's say you wanted to flip your pancake, so you get out your um, spatula, and obviously when you flip your pancake, you don't want to burn your hand. So you take something like this spatula might be made of plastic, and this pan uh, here might be made of metal. And the reason this is plastic is because it does not conduct heat well, and metal does conduct heat well. So if you look at the difference here, we often choose things in our kitchen because of their ability or their inability to conduct heat. Now the second type of energy transfer we talk about is convection. So let's take a look here at my oven. Now, one thing I like to cook in the oven is pizza. So let's say I've put a pizza in the oven, it's got all these different toppings on it, and you say, well, how does the pizza cook? Because the heat is down here. This is often the heating area of your oven. Now, if we zoom in on that hot area down there in the whole process, in the bottom of your oven where the heat is, it's going to have air particles that bump into that heat. And when an air molecule heats up, it rises, and as it cools down, that air molecule might sink back down. 
So this heat, if our pizza is sitting in here, these hot particles come up and they run into the pizza and any cold ones drop back down and they can heat up again. So this process is convection. Uh, convection happens in fluids and by fluids we mean liquids or gases where high energy particles rise, low energy particles sink. So in the oven, these are the high energy particles and they rise and then the low energy particles sink back down. Now that's happening in your oven, but it also happens in the kitchen in general. If you measure the temperature at the floor, you're gonna find out that it's much colder than, than the temperature up by the ceiling. The final type of energy exchange is called radiation. Now if we look at our toaster here, uh, if we zoomed in on that, we could find out that we often put a piece of bread into the toaster. So let's say this is our bread. And next to it, you often find these hot orange coils that just have electricity flowing through them. Well, if you could zoom in on that, you would see that there is little waves of energy that comes off these coils and it's pushing energy into the bread. This last kind of energy transfer is called radiation. And it is energy transfer in the form of waves that pass energy to heat atoms. Or basically when, an, when, a, uh, when a wave of radiation hits an atom, that atom gains energy. It starts to move faster. Okay, so that's the basic concept of heat energy transfer. And this takes place in this picture in the kitchen, but you could imagine it could happen in any kind of situation. So I challenge you to think of a place where energy transfer is happening and try to come up with your own ideas about where you can observe conduction, convection, and radiation in your daily life. All right, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.